And I, and I think that's like what you just said, like there's a good segue back to to Salwan. Um, you know, like this is your first time you're coming back to your native country uh, after 25 years. And so photos that we're seeing um, is your exploration of, of that country and what it means to be uh, Iraqi. Um, can you um, tell us a little, like, can you, can you go through um, your feelings as you're rediscovering um, Baghdad, where you were born? I mean, I went through a lot of emotions and a lot of feelings as I'm, I'm going through, um, like almost like back in, back in history, back in time. A lot of the, a lot of the times uh, when I see Iraq on the news or as, as see my colleagues, uh, Louisa, Mustafa, Osama, work hard in Baghdad, risk their life. Um, I had a, always a calling, like, I want to go back in my country and, and help and see, but I never had the opportunity until now. And when I finally went back, I mean, I didn't realize how much I, I was attached and how much that place uh, is part of me and who I am um, as uh, as I was taken away from it really, really at an early age. But now like I'm back there and I can, it's, it's the first place where I'm walking down the street and everybody's speaking my language. It's the first place I wake up in the morning. I'm here in Iraqi outside my window, not like any different countries where my, I do my job. It's a, it's a feeling that I don't think anyone can, like I cannot describe it. And it's hard to describe it unless you live through it. So being there, being able to walk down the street as I said and like like and and communicate with people in a way no matter what country I am or I speak English or the language is you always feel like you don't belong there that's not that's not where you, you're supposed to be from I know Iraq has changed but for me um, as I went through many many hard times there during my last trip like seeing the grave of my grandpa destroyed uh, by a military as they were searching for um, uh, weapons uh, as I was you know finding the exam same exact site where my uncle was killed by a bomb, car bomb um, it, it was more of a reaching a, a closure for me and also saying goodbye to the past as, as I move, move forward. And when I go back, I hope to create a new memories. I hope to be smiling like in this picture with my mom. Um, as, as I see a lot of hope was taken away from Iraqis, a lot of hard time they went through. Um, Iraqis, you know, we have a thing, we always joke on, on our situation and that never changed. Like the, the love to live was always there. And when I got there and was around my friends, around my colleagues, it's really, it really made me feel that um, as hard as they tried to take that away from us, we were, they were still standing and people kept who they are. So like the, as uh, a, the... The, the name of this discussion is um, how, I, how I did it. And um, yes. wondering like- I did it with this. <laughs> but like, I'm like wondering about the, uh, um, you know, when when you've been away from, from your own country for almost 24 years uh, and you're going back, uh, it's the first time. Um, I'm sure it's very overwhelming. There's a lot uh, to consider. Where do you start? What was- the so first thing that you decided to do. So when I when I first got there, I was picked up by my uh, colleagues Mustafa and Osama, who are uh, based in Iraq and works with Luis and I uh, as as our team in Iraq. And um, I told them first, take me to eat some Iraqi food that I haven't had in so long. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Different. What did you have? I think we went to some local restaurant uh, and we had some a lot of rice and stews and everything. And I also had my favorite desserts, you know, the sit, which is you saw in one of the pictures. Those the, all these things like I've been dreaming about, hope hoping to to try them again. But it's it's never the same than when you tried in Iraq. So um, that was that was the first thing we did. And then as well, and and as 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 we talk about. Um, the protest and uh, the the toll it took and how it crushed a lot of the youth 
dreams. Uh, that was the first place I went to, even before um, eating or, or going to that. We we drove straight from airport to here, and and when I saw it, it was like I couldn't believe I was there. I couldn't. Everything rushed to my um, my head. Seeing all these uh, uh, images and 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 clips were coming from my colleagues down there and the people who were there, and. Um, I just had to take a moment and and pay re respect and and uh, take a uh, um, uh, you know take a moment of silence basically on all the lives that were lost um, by you know by evil evil acts to destroy youth dreams and then like you know um, we we could kind of like I had a list uh, but the problem with it is like. Iraq is not the same because of the population, of how crowded it is. We had to kind of go on a journey, my team and I, trying to hopefully find the homes where I grew up. So we kept moving around, asking people. All I had is the name of a place. Um, maybe, you know, my school, if I find my school, I will remember where my house is. And I was shocked to find like some of these places are like still standing there untouched from the 90s and uh, we're talking about a country that was destroyed a lot of it was damaged destroyed by the war overgrown my first home i was born it was overbuilt um the garden we had is gone uh the chicken coop was gone uh everything it's it's gone now. so almost um uh the streets are way narrow now than what it was and then um you know, kept exploring, kept trying to find my home. And then when I found those places that are still there standing, it it took me way back. It's it was it was there for me to say goodbye, I think. That's how I felt. Yeah. And you mentioned like this is this is a photo of you uh um that street the your home street uh when you were a kid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then in in this photo like you you're seeing this element of the photo here. Uh and so this is over well, here. So this is like where you were born right yeah and uh and uh uh i remember my, my mustafa and i our colleague we kept going back and forth in the street facetime and family so i'm like do you remember what it was they were like yeah it used to be a factory or like an open like area down there where i was like there's no open area there's more what what you know uh power lines there's more you know homes everything is changed everything is not the same uh but uh we we kept asking we kept looking until we found those places and 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 uh, i really felt attached to those places when i got there because those places i didn't have an opportunity to have a one last look at them didn't have the opportunity to have that memory of home uh um because after that we we kept moving until you know until we find our um, kind of like home in Michigan with my family. Uh, w one of the questions being asked is, is uh, you know, about uh, you being a refugee. Um, how does it inform your like um, your photojournalism that experience? Uh, and and the question mentions like some of the work that you've done in Ukraine, uh, especially uh, that powerful photograph of. Uh, Family saying goodbye at a train station as like they're fleeing um, uh, the war and the uh, husband has to stay to fight. Um, what? Um, how did your refugee experience influence you in that moment? Can we go to the photo of the bus station, please? Yeah. Um, so, you know, in Ukraine, um, you know, was maybe my the first war official where I covered, I've covered different conflicts across the U.S. Um, overseas, but Ukraine, uh, um, it was a war that uh, kind of was, um, you, you, you well, the one of the most documented war in the recent history. We had access like nowhere before, and there wasn't a battlefield. Everywhere was a battlefield, so we were around people fleeing for their life, and uh, uh and people were, you know, looking out for their kids, trying to take refuge, watching from the windows. And it took me back when I was taking that picture of, of uh, Georgie saying goodbye to his um, 
uh, wife and, and kids. It took me back to this place because in the late 90s, my dad put my mom and I on this bus in this area and sent us away. And I remember looking at my dad through the window and uh, say, wondering like, if I'm ever going to see him again, if I'm ever going to uh, be able to say goodbye. My dad was standing out there crying, saying goodbye to us. Um, I didn't understand me many a lot of that but i remember looking as we drove through the desert from baghdad to amman jordan i remember looking away in the in the distance and wondering like was this the last time i'm going to see my dad was this the uh opportunity that uh you know the last opportunity what's going to happen am i going to see him again so when i was in ukraine and i was witnessing this moment i i was really uh, it was really heavy for me but i had to keep doing my job and i had to really show the world the suffering of these people uh, even though like once it was it was my, it was mine 